Yo YouTube, what's good? It's the boy Skyler and today we have Central C versus Diggity with the Drill War documentary. Alright, we're gonna check out like I didn't even know there was beefing, so we're gonna check it out. And yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Alright, let's get it. Central C broke out of the UK drill scene to become an international star. But most fans have no idea about his time in the streets or his violent beef with Digga D, another drill rapper who grew up five minutes away from him. From Damn, machete fights five? to prison stabbings, this is the shocking story behind their deadly beef. Central C and Digga D are both from London's West End in an area called Labra. Digga D spent his entire early life there, but Central C's family ended up moving five minutes away to a neighborhood called Shepherd's Bush. Shepherd's Bush and Labrook are two of the most violent areas in the West End. Labbrook actually has a lot of wealthy people and nice homes though. It's a wild place because on one side of the street, you have families who can't afford food or keep the lights on, and right across from them, you'll see little kids with parents who buy them Rolexes. Back in the day... Bro, that's so messed up though, just to have like those two different communities, like one shit across from each other, so you're just seeing like wealthy people across the street and you're struggling. Bro, that's only like... It could be like motivation, but at the same time, it could be like, damn bro, like... Both areas were under the umbrella of one gang called 916. It's not clear what went down behind the scenes, but at some point they had an internal beef and ended up splitting the hoods apart. The crew from Labbrook became known as 1011, and the dudes in Shepherd's Bush started two new gangs called 12 World and 12 Anti. Even though they're technically two different sets, 12 World and 12 Anti are clicked up heavy and share the same ops. Central C and Digga D also went to the same school for a while, but they was a couple of years apart and Digga ended up getting kicked out pretty early after he got caught with weed. See, the thing is, just like, even they know each other personally, they, it's like, imagine if they wasn't beefing and actually, like, made music together and whatnot, and actually, and they come up together, bro. That's, like, the biggest, like, downfall with all this shit, bro, because people, like, they'd be quick to beef and whatnot, but it just, like, imagine if they, like, work together and shit, and actually do, like, pro have, like, projects together. C was always surrounded by street activity, so far. but he actually tried working a legit job before hopping off the porch. C started working at a shoe store, but it ain't take long for him to realize that the real money was in the trenches. After just three weeks, he knew that working retail wasn't going to support the kind of lifestyle he wanted, so Damn. he bounced and started moving weight instead. Around the same time, C was already trying to make it in the music industry. He came up listening to reggae, dancehall, and American rap that his dad would play when he visited, and C started combining it all to try and find his own sound. Digga D got an early start with rap too. His parents introduced him to a lot of Jamaican reggae, and Digga started writing his own music at around 12 years old. He One thing I didn't realize is how big of an influence Jamaica is in the UK, bro. Like from the slang to like music, the culture, like Jamaica is such a big deal, is such a big influence in the UK, and I didn't even know. Like that is such a I cut this like two worlds are so far apart, but yet again, it's so close. He didn't have a stable childhood at all, though, and spent a lot of time at a place called the Harrow Club. The Harrow Club is a center for disadvantaged kids that's been around since 1883, and Digger says it was crazy important to him back in the day. When it was too cold to be outside and he didn't have anywhere to go, Digga and his homies would play football inside and started hanging out in the building's old recording studio. That's where he started laying down his first tracks. Around the same time, Digger suffered a tragic loss. When he was 11 years old, the grandma Digga lived with at the time suddenly passed away. He paid tribute to her on the track intro and rapped, Mom's life, I was 11 or 12, with half an M and some digital scales. Moved in Damn. with my nan, used to sneak in girls. 177 South Tram Crescent, my nan got cancer, I was 11. She passed away, no she went to heaven. And she's on my mind, that's all through lessons. He dropped mm. his first single just a couple years later, but it would take a while before he had any real success in the industry. Digga still had both feet in the trenches while he was working on his craft. Him and his 1011 homies was putting pressure on the ops in the streets and in the booth. One of their ops sets is a crew called Endgame, and in 2017, one of their affiliates was brutally stabbed to death in the middle of the day. Abdullahi Tarabi, aka T Wiz, was caught by two. Bro, that's. Bro, he look young and shit, though. He look like he's at least 16, 17. But, anyways, right? One thing with the UK, they don't really have like firearms over there. They have like knives and machete and stuff, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I think I'm I'm more afraid of a knife and a machete than I am of a gun. Cause you know everyone know how a paper cut feels. Imagine you getting cut with a knife, bro, like stab multiple times, imagine to death and oh hell no. 
two ops, and stabbed twice. He ran away screaming for help while a bunch of horrified families watched it happen. Then he tragically collapsed around 100 yards away and died at the scene. Around 20 Wait, so no one helped him? Wow, that's so messed Caught up. Caught by two ops and stabbed twice. He ran away screaming for help while a bunch of horrified families watched it happen. Then he tragically collapsed around 100 yards away and died at the scene. Damn. Around 2016 and 2017, Digger and the rest of 1011 started dropping some of the most savage drill tracks in UK history. And on the song Kill Confirmed, Digger dissed T Wiz. He have a song called Kill. All right, see, now this is America influence now. This is what you call. Yeah, this is. Yeah. <laughs> he have a song called Kill Confirm. That's some Call Savage of Duty drill shit. Tracks in UK history. And on the song Kill Confirm, Digger dissed T Wiz and his brother and rapped. If you run too slow, then you're pissed. We ain't touch no one from the end. Everyone knows that's Fibs. Young T Wiz got a chest shot. He just never died like his bro T Wiz. Damn. Digger was popping off like crazy and helped put UK Drill on the map. But instead of going all in with the music, he was still active in the streets. And at the end of 2017, he got locked up with a bunch of other 1011 affiliates for allegedly planning an attack on 12 World. 1011 had beef with a few different sets on the West End, but they was always taking shots at dudes from Shepherd's Bush. The 1011 track next up went viral like crazy and racked up over a million streams in under a couple of weeks. And on the track, Digger's homie Savo raps. How many times have I read on Bush? Like one of them boys gotta go. Back out my ting and make man swim. Like Ching man down on votes. Catch me an op and stab up his head. Then ten toes back to the grove. Baby, and down wild. on votes. Catch me an op and stab up his head. Then ten toes back to the grove. The cops found Digger and his homies on their way to 12 World Territory carrying baseball bats and machetes and booked them on conspiracy to commit violent disorder. They all tried to claim they were just shooting a music video, but the cops didn't buy it and Digger got hit with the one year sentence. Damn. Getting locked up right when the music was gaining traction was bad, but the situation had way more consequences than anyone expected. While he was in court, the cops started taking a closer look at Digger's music videos and lyrics and realized 1011 was talking about real life situations in their tracks. They thought self snitching, stop self snitching. Yeah, that song Kill Confirm. They're gonna be like, wait, can Kill Confirm? Break down the lyrics. Oh, wait, these events and this time kind of line up. And then you put, you know, a target on your back. The music might lead to more violence in the streets. So they hit Digger with a criminal behavior order and required him to get permission from the police to release new music, ban him from talking about specific areas of London, and ban him from referencing any real. What? They can do that in the UK? You need permission to release music from the police. What? And you're banned from talking about certain areas of the... Damn, and I'm thinking like... Damn, bro. That's kind of crazy. Ban them from talking about specific areas of London and ban them from referencing any real crimes or the people involved with them. Plus, four of 1011's music videos were taken off of YouTube by the police. They had already run up huge numbers and were building a worldwide audience through their music videos. But the cops put a massive hurdle in front of them when they took the videos down. Damn, if they could bro. put out any music that the cops thought broke the CBO, they could take him right back to prison and there was nothing he could do about it. Anti-censorship groups came out to fight for Digger's freedom from the CBO, but none of it worked and he had to learn how to make drill music under the crazy rules they put on him. While Digger and 1011 was paving a new lane in UK drill, Central C was working on his own craft. He hopped on the track Ain't Nothing Remix with Jay Hugh back in 2015, which led to him getting a feature with Dave. Dave is one of the hottest UK rappers in the world right now. But bro, I gotta check out more of Dave's music, bro. I gotta check out more of his back music. Back then, he was still underground, so Central C didn't get a lot of shine from working with him. Back then, Central C was rapping with autotune and making pretty generic trap songs. He dropped his first single in 2016 and followed it up with two projects in 2017, but none of it made much of an impact in the UK drill scene. While he was trying to get the music popping, C was still in the streets though. And in 2018, the beef between him and Digga D almost took a deadly turn. In 2018, Digga came back home after serving time for allegedly planning the attack on 12 World. He wasn't going to just keep his head down and focus on the music though. And in November, he allegedly caught Central C and his brother on the street. On November 30th, 2018, Central Damn. C was with his little brother and some of their homies on the block when Digga D and one of his people pulled up on them and started some kind of argument. It's not clear what the situation was really about, but it got so heated that Digga allegedly pulled out a blade and stabbed Central C's brother. Digga and the other dude were both arrested and went back to prison what? for violating his criminal behavior order. The charges ended up getting dropped, but Digga still had to deal with some life-changing consequences over it. While he was back on the inside, someone attacked Digga with a blade they made out of a tuna can and stabbed him in the eye. 
Digger lost vision in the eye and his lawyer said he was dealing with PTSD over the situation. He still wasn't allowed to speak on any. Damn, so he, wait, so Digger have one, like, he can only see out of one eye? In real life violence in his music, but last year, Digger allegedly admitted to stabbing Central C's brother on a leaked track where he raps, who the fuck is Central C? The only wilds in West is me. We shoved his brother, went to jail, but still took the not guilty plea. And on another leak, he said, don't compare me. Self snitching once again, bro. Why are you self snitching, bro? It just like, okay, went to jail, whatever. Let it be. Like, why are you bringing up old situation, bro? Like, like, see. Stupid. He just stood there and watched when we chinged his brother. I went to jail for that little fucker. I still came home to the nice of supper. Central mm. C clapped back on the track called Shoulder and Raps. Last time I let that slide, but this time I ain't gonna let that run. They made a diss track. That shit was too whack to get a response. It's sad, cat. I love my hood where I'm from, but that place ain't where I belong. Then he took it a step further on the track, ended up beginning and said, see the way I chop it? Would've thought I had a black belt. I don't even need practice. I'm a natural. I want to hit Tennessee and don't mean Nashville. The line was about a model that Digger D used to date named Tennessee Thresher. Obviously the diss ain't having too pressed though, cause Digger just tweeted, he said, I ain't talking about Nashville. I talk about Tennessee, but I ain't talking about Nashville. I ain't talking about America now. Rapping about 10, that's your way of payback? Damn, little bro. Digger D and Central C were already ops because of the crews they rep. But there's another reason Digger has issues with them. Since at least 2018, Jealousy? Digger has been sending shots back and forth with another rapper named Fredo. It's not clear where it all started, but one time Fredo went on Instagram Live and said that he's not making music with anyone from Labrook Grove. Not making songs for Labrook Grove, but they're not Grove. Later, Digger was on live when someone started playing a track from Fredo and Day. Digger made it clear that he wasn't rocking with either one of them and said to turn it off. See what I'm saying? Oh, my man turned this shit off, man. <laughs> Then after the news broke that Digger got stabbed in jail, oh the UK rap page put up a post wishing him well, and Fredo sent a sneak diss by commenting an ambulance emoji. Central C linking up with Fredo and Dave could be one reason that Digger has so much beef with him. But oh, some fans oh. think it all comes from jealousy. Central C has been in the game almost as long as Digger, but it took him a lot longer to pop off. By 2020, Digger already had millions of streams and a big name in the industry, but Central C was still pretty much underground. He was I think at this point, like Central C is bigger than Digga D now since he's like making him uh, like Central C is working with Drake and all that. And Central C is like popping, popping in America now, too. So it's like, yeah, I think by right now he's bigger. He thought about giving up on rap and going a different way. But then he switched up his style and everything changed. In 2020, Central C dropped the autotune trap style and went all in with Drill on the track Day in the Light. It was clear from the jump that he made the right move changing styles. The track popped off and ran up over 70 million views on YouTube. And Damn. overnight, Central C was becoming the face of the UK drill scene. C wasn't just blowing up in the rap game though. One thing that really pushed him to the next level was when he linked up with a streetwear company called Trapstar. Trapstar is kind of like Supreme, but based out of London, and the hype around the brand is crazy. While C was promoting his debut mixtape, Wild West, they designed the official merch and put an even bigger spotlight on him. Wild West came out at number two on a UK albums chart and shot C straight into the mainstream. Drake co-signed him and even gave C his first modeling See? job for his Nike clothing line. C kept it pushing and dropped more hits like Obsessed With You and Retail Therapy, then leveled up again with the Shit. track Doja. He linked up with Cole Bennett for the music video and hit over half a billion streams on Spotify. And by the end of 2022, he had become the first UK rapper to run up over a billion streams in one year. 2023 is even crazier for him. He linked up with Dave again for the track Sprinter, and this time, they were both already at the top of the game. Sprinter was a single for their collab tape Split Decision, and the track ended up breaking the record for the longest running number one rap song in UK history. Then Double XL added C to the 2023 freshman class, and Drake linked up with him for his on the radar freestyle too. Central C didn't just take over UK drill, he's becoming an international star with fans all over the world. Bro. Digga D definitely helped pave the way for him to come through, but he's had a tough time staying out of trouble. 2020 was when Central C got his name buzzing. In that same year, Digga D pleaded guilty to a charge of violent disorder and got hit with a two year and six month sentence. The charge came after he was involved with the wild machine. Bro, I know Digga D's in jail right now. Just, bro, I know he's fuming. That's watching like Central C take off. Like, where he's supposed to be at is where Central C is at right now. And I know he's fuming. Shetty fight in front of a bunch of civilians outside of a shopping center. 
His homie Savo went down for the situation too and took a three year sentence. Digger got off easy and was back home by 2021. He still had a lot of buzz on his name thanks to tracks like No Diet, which hit over 30 million views on YouTube, Damn. plus a bunch of viral freestyles. But it wasn't long before he was right back in handcuffs. In July 2021. Bro, Digger D, bro, you. <laughs> this man just can't get it. Like, bro, like your music is doing good. Why are you keep doing bullshit, bro? He was arrested after going to a Black Lives Matter protest and posting about it on Instagram. They booked him for inciting violence just for holding up a sign at the protest. And fans jumped in immediately. Okay, no, that's bullshit. That is they bullshit. They called the police out for trying to censor him. Luckily, he was released. But just a few months later, rumors started flying that Digga had been arrested in Dubai for stabbing someone. Nobody knows what really went down over there, but Digga hopped on social media to squash the rumors. He said that he had been arrested and questioned, but that he didn't hurt anyone. What's crazy about the situation is that all of the legal drama hasn't even slowed Digga down. Last year, he dropped his third mixtape and debuted at number one on the UK albums chart. Damn. And in September 2022, he launched his own label, Black Money Records. Digga is definitely more known for crashing out and getting arrested, but it seems like he's really trying to turn it all around and help keep other kids from falling into the street life. In an interview with The Guardian, he talks about how he understands the influence he has on kids from London and needs to think more before he speaks. He's also getting active in his old community and went back to the Herald Club to hand out clothes and food to kids who need it. Oh, that's he just good. dropped that's his newest project a couple of weeks ago, and on the track Fighting For My Soul, Digga addressed how he has to switch everything up to make it farther and rapped. God gave me life, so I can't tell him I'm suicidal. It's been rewritten, but I still find a time to read mm. the Bible. I'm a rapper. That's my title. Someone's idol. So I'm mindful when I talk, because if not, they'll cancel me. A lot of violence and kept Digger behind bars when he could have been performing shows and dropping more music. But somehow, him and Central C both survived and made it out on top. They'll probably never be cool with each other because there's too much history between them and yeah. their crews. But for right now, oh, it looks like the beat is cool enough for them to focus but on their own too careers. Much, bro, to come back from that. Well, that's it for that reaction. Listen, I appreciate you guys for sticking around this long. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.